Hello my dear students, I hope you all are doing great. This is Seema Banjari, your mentor and your guide. Uh, I want to say sorry to you all for not being regular with my videos, but in future, I'll definitely try to be more regular. Okay, so as today's video is part three of number systems, let me tell you what all we are going to discuss today. So the first thing that we will be discussing is rationalization, rationalizing the denominator and then uh, we will discuss laws of exponents and then we will finally end up the video by uh, discussing the last topic of the chapter that is successive magnification. Okay, so let's start today's class. Right, so the first so the first topic that we are going to discuss is rationalizing the denominator okay as you can understand from the name rationalizing the denominator what does it mean it means you have to rationalize the denominator the denominator of a number any number is not rational it's irrational and you have to rationalize it okay let's take an example let's say this okay here you are like you have to rationalize the denominator because you see the denominator is root 2 and root 2 is what root 2 is an irrational number and you have to rationalize the denominator you have to make it rational now how we can rationalize it let's see okay if this is simple expression 1 upon root 2 we have to rationalize the denominator a denominator what we will do we will multiply both the numerator and the denominator by root 2 because we know once we multiply root 2 with root 2 it will become 2 so the denominator will become 2 right so 1 into root 2 is a root 2 and in the denominator root 2 into root 2 is what 2 so 1 upon root 2 on rationalizing gives us root 2 upon 2 and the denominator is rationalized right it's simple okay let's take one more example Okay, so here we have to rationalize 1 upon 2 plus root 3, right? You see here that the previous question that we solved, it was just 1 upon root 2, it was simple. But here we have 2 plus root 3. In such questions where the denominator is of this type, what you have to do? You, you just have to do one simple thing that just change the sign of the, this middle sign. Okay, it's 2 plus root 3 here will make 2 minus root 3. We multiply the numerator and denominator both by you know by this 2 minus root 3 by reversing you have to reverse the sign of this uh, this sign you have to reverse so if it is plus we'll use minus 2 minus will multiply by minus okay 2 minus root 3 and if it is minus will multiply by 2 plus root 3 means whatever sign here is here you have to change it and multiply both denominator and numerator by it so once we do this, so 1 into this, so you will multiply 1 with any number, it will remain that only. So in the numerator, we will get 2 minus root 3. But here you see, you have to multiply this by this, means 2 plus root 3 into minus root 3. Now you remember the laws of exponents? Uh, no, no, uh, we did, you know, uh, identities, algebraic identities. So one of the identity was a plus b into a minus b a plus b into a minus b is a square minus b square okay so here 2 plus root 3 2 minus root 3 it will become a square minus b square so a square means 2 square and minus root 3 square root 3 square okay so here 2 minus root 3 we cannot do anything with this because it will remain as it is 2 square will become 4 and minus root 3 square root 3 into root 3 is 3 so 3 so 2 minus root 3 we cannot do anything here so 4 minus 3 is 1 so what is the answer 2 minus root 3 and this way we have rationalized the denominator i hope you get it okay it's simple so whatever is in the denominator you just have to change the sign of this operation if it is plus make it minus and then multiply uh, the numerator and denominator by that and this way you can solve any kind of question based on rationalizing the denominator the trick is simple okay done let's now move to discuss uh, laws of exponents 
let's discuss laws of exponents now but before we do that we need to know what exponents mean right exponent you know like it looks so fancy name but it just means the power of something you know like if i write 2 to the power 3 it means uh, 3 is the exponent 3 is the power okay 2 to the power 3 so exponents so laws of exponents so we have to discuss that okay so the first law while discussing these laws i'll be solving one or two question here and there so that you you know understand it nicely so the first law of exponent is x to the power a into x to the power b means if two terms are getting multiplied and the base is same then the power will add up so it will become x to the power a plus b okay x to the power a x into the x to the power b it will become x to the power a plus b let's take an example 2 to the power 4 into 2 to the power 5 so it what it will become base is same so it will become 2 to the power 9 4 plus 5 9 okay let's take one more example if 2 to the power minus 3 in let's say uh, no, no let's take another example 5 to the power minus 1 into 5 to the power 3 so here the powers will get added means minus 3 plus 1 and min minus 1 plus 3 means 5 to the power minus 1 plus 3 and minus 1 plus 3 means plus 2 so 5 to the power 2 okay so this is first law of exponent right now the second law of exponent says x to the power a and y to the power a okay if both the numbers have the same power both numbers are getting multiplied and that they have the same power what we can do we can simply write x into y raise whole to the power a because both have the power both have same power a so what we can simply write x into y raised to the power a okay so let's take an example if it is written like this 5 square into uh, 9 square so instead of you know solving this first then this first and then multiplying the two what we can write we can simply write it as 5 into 9 raised to the power 2 and 5 into 9 is what 45 square okay so this is second identity second laws of exponent now let's come to third law of exponent it says if two numbers are getting divided x to the power a divided by x to the power b base base are same okay but they have different powers so and they are getting divided so what will happen when they are getting multiplied the powers will add up when we are dividing them the powers will get subtracted so x to the power a minus b okay you're getting it let's take an example uh, 5 to the power 3 divided by 5 to the power or simply 5 okay it means simple 5 means 5 to the power 1 so according to this law of exponent it will become 5 to the power 3 minus 1 and 3 minus 1 will be 5 square okay so this is the third law of exponent now let's see the fourth law of exponent x to the power a raised to the power whole power b okay what here is written x to the power a and to the whole is power b so in this case what we can do powers can get multiplied x to the power a into b a b right a b means a into b so x to the power a b okay if let's take an example 3 square whole power 5 okay so it will become 3 to the power 2 into 5 is what 10 so 3 to the power 10 simple okay now
there is one more law of exponent basically it is very basic but still i am telling you okay if something is written like this okay in the denominator 1 upon x square and if you take this term to the numerator so what it will become it will become minus 2 x to the power minus 2 the sign of the power gets reversed the sign of the exponent gets reversed okay if, if you change if you bring it to the numerator or from numerator to the denominator okay if it is x cube written we can also write it as x in the denominator 1 upon x to the power minus 3 okay if let's say this is 5 upon y to the power minus 6 we can also write it as 5y to the power 6. It was minus 6 in the denominator. Okay, on bringing it to the numerator, it will become 5 to the power 6. So, the sign of the power will get reversed. Okay, so it will be really useful to you while solving the questions on laws of exponents in the chapter. Right? Now, this was laws of exponents done. Now let's move to the last topic of the day and that is successive magnification. Okay. Okay. So what successive magnification means? Successive means repeatedly and magnification means we are increasing the size. We are doubling the size, you know, like, but what we are going to magnify here, right? What we are going to magnify. So we are going to magnify on the number line. Okay. Yes, my dear students, you heard me right that we need to magnify on the number line. But why do we need to do so? You see a question on your screen. Plot 3.141 on the number line. How we are going to plot this number on the number line? It's quite challenging, right? Because it is 0.141, right? How we are going to do this? First of all, just see that this number you know 3.141 one thing is really sure that this number is greater than 3 because it is 3.141 okay it is greater than 3 right and 3 point something it means it is less than 4 okay so we know that this number lies between 3 and 4 between this region right this it exactly lies between 3 and 4 this area Okay, this green shaded portion, you know, light green shaded portion. So, it lies there. But between 3 and 4, exactly where? Where does this number exactly lies between 3 and 4? To see that, you know, the need for magnification comes. We need to magnify this region. Okay, you see here we have magnified the region between 3 and 4. Right, and we have divided, you know, between 3 and 4 into 10 parts. We have divided that region into 3 equal parts. So, you see, like this is the magnified uh, region between 3 and 4. So, we have divided it into 10 parts 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, .3, and so on. Now, again, just focus on the number. It is 3.1, 3.1, right? 3.1. So, it is 3.1 means it is greater than 3.1, right? And it's 3.1 something, it means it is less than 3.2, okay? It means the number will lie somewhere between 3.1 and 3.2. So, it means the number lies between 3.1 and 3.2. Now, 3.1 and 3.2, where exactly? We need to magnify this region again on magnifying. On magnifying, we got, we have again divided this region between 3.1 and 3.2 into 10 equal parts and we have named them 3.11, 3.12, 3.13 and so on. Now, again focus on the number. It is 3.14. Now, you see the next number 14. It means the number is greater than 3.14, right? And it is 3.14, so-so. It means it is less than 3.15. Okay, it means the number will lie between 3.14 and 3.15. Clear? Now, what? Again, we need to magnify this region between 3.14 and 3.15 to plot our number. Let's magnify it again. So, again, we have, you know, divided the region between 3.14 and 3.15 into 10 parts. Now, 3.141, 3.142. Now, you get your number. Can you see it? 
here is the number 3.141 okay so now you understood what successive magnification is because we are magnifying the number line again and again successively repeatedly so that's why it is called successive magnification clear what if i ask you to plot 3. Oh, sorry 4.56723 and so 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 on on the number line it means you need to magnify on the number line you know infinite times which is not possible so if in exam this kind of question comes to you what you will do you will just magnify till three decimal places you will just plot this number like 4567 4.567 on the number line and the rest we cannot plot actually because it is infinite number okay it's it's a decimal expansion is infinite so we will just place such number till three decimal places uh, clear before wrapping up let's quickly have a look at whatever we have learned today and with this we have come to the end of the video as well as to the end of the chapter i would like you to solve more and more questions from your uh, you know from your book from other books as well from rd sharma and other reference books that you have or practice practice and practice because you know practice makes a man perfect right on this note i would like to say bye but before going i want you all to please like share and subscribe to the channel bye bye and take care